They say the Jewish proverb says there's three things every man should do. Write a book, plant a tree, have a son. Mm. Why? Because they all outlive you. Mm. We as men want to live thousands of years. Mm. The only way you're going to live thousands of years is by the value you bring to the world that's documented, Mm -hmm. is by giving back to, and and I know the tree is what they're saying with tree, not even tree today, because a tree is being cut down and (laughs) turned into paper. It's a business model now, right? (laughs) But it's family, Mm -hmm. it's blood. And when you see your kid and you find somebody to build a family with that's a good partner, meshes with you, good personality, you sit there and say, okay, great, this looks good. We can actually pull this off. Then there's value for it. And so one of the, one of the things is there's a, a lot of conversations about, you know, the behaviors of very successful men. And, um, you know, and, and I always said there's, there's levels to the game. You know, there's, there's the guys that, you know, there's a hundred thousands, there's a million, there's a 10 million, you know, cat pass at the top of the level. You know what I mean? Pat is a guy who was an extremely successful man. A lot of people will show things on social media, but Patrick hands down successful man that you cannot deny. So one of the questions that people always ask is what is the incentive of a very successful, especially financially successful man to settle down and become and get married? So I'm very curious about from good your question. personal pers- perspective as a man who was being successful, who, who had an onward trajectory, who was doing so well, what made you decide to, to get married? The risk is very high, by the way, to mm-hmm. get married. You know, for, for me, when I was 28, I had made a decision I'm never going to get married. I oh, said, wow. I'm, I'm staying single. And uh, my uh, assistant, very good friend of mine at that time, Sandra Patty, said, why don't you go read this book, 101 Questions to Ask Before You Get Engaged by mm. Norman Wright. So I read the book. When I read the book, I'm like, huh, interesting. I was talking to four girls at the time. I said, why don't you guys read this book as well and see how you feel about it? <laughs> so they did. I'm like, I could never be with you. You and I would never work out, would never work out. But I asked the one question, why get married? There's way too much risk to it. So then I sat there and said, well, you have somebody to come home to every night. You can still have somebody to come home to if you're single. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, you can have options. Yeah. If you, you know what I mean? When you have the money, you can do whatever you want to do with that. Yeah, but uh, tax benefits, I don't care about that. I can move to another state and get better tax <laughs> benefits. It's, it's somebody that you're, uh, you know, uh, it's somebody that can help you. It's somebody that can do this. Mm, not, not there yet. And then you, it goes to, okay, look, you can make all the money in the world. Then what? Like what leaves you? A book? Yeah, they say the Jewish proverb says there's three things every man should do. Write a book, plant a tree, have a son. Mm. Why? Because they all outlive you. Mm. We as men want to live thousands of years. Mm. The only way you're going to live thousands of years is by the value you bring to the world that's documented, Mm -hmm. is by giving back to, and, and I know the tree is what they're saying with tree, not even tree today, because a tree is being cut down and turned into paper. It's a <laughs> yeah. business model now, right? <laughs> yeah. But it's family, mm-hmm. it's blood. And when you see your kid and you find somebody to build a family with that's a good partner, meshes with you, good personality, you sit there and say, okay, great, this looks good. We can actually pull this off. Then there's value for it. But I'm gonna tell you something here right now. Basic rules about getting married today. Wouldn't get me. If I'm a man, I'm not getting married before 30 at all. Mm. I would not even think about getting married pre 30. A lot of people argue with me. You don't know what you're talking about. I got married at 22 years old and I'm happily married. I'm 62. Mm. 22, 62. That was 40 years ago. (laughs) That means the 80s. Yeah. You didn't have social media. You didn't have Mm. Snapchat. You didn't have Tinder. You don't have accessibility to what's out there today. Mm. Accessibility to sex today is so easy. Mm. The ability to be tempted today and screw up. It's so easy. Mm. The ability to screw up and make a royally, publicly humiliating mistake today is very high. Mm. And ain't no man walk on water. Mm. Okay, And no man walks on water. Everybody sees and says, oh my gosh, oh, she's beautiful, but I'm American. There's nobody that's perfect to say, oh, I don't have to worry about the mistakes I'm going to make. Mm-hmm. The risk is high today. The reward is not as high as it used to be mm-hmm. because at least back in the days, you know, back in the days, say you and your wife got into a fight 20 years ago. You got a 30 minute drive, okay? And at the office, you talk to her. Why well, don't I come home and talk to you tonight? You got 30 minutes to calm down by the time you come home. Mm-hmm. Today, if you get into a fight, 
instantly that mm. second what you want to say you say so yeah. you offend you offend you offend you offend scar 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 mm. it's just like dude i'm so done with this marriage so today we have too much of the opportunity to react instantly there's too much instant reaction and hey you don't know what you're talking about that fight is too instant so those are all scars that you're leaving on each other right mm. and eventually after all the scars you get it's like i i just I just have no desire to do anything with you in bed anymore. I mm. really don't. I'm good. I'm just, you're facing this way. She's facing that way. So it has to be built on the right values and principles. It has to be somebody that you date for some time and you see all the dark side of them and yourself to see if you can do this or not. Preferably a referral that's coming through somebody instead of cold. Mm. Uh, I knew my wife five and a half years before we got married. She really? knew my flaws. I knew her flaws. Oh yeah, she dated other guys. I dated other girls. And eventually we said, let's see what could happen here. And we build a family together. You have to create certain criterias uh, before you, and when you get married, watch the fights, watch the arguments, watch how people argue. I remember one time my wife, we were dating and she is about to lose uh, financially. She wasn't the best of place at that time. Certain you know, challenges took place. She was in a mortgage real estate business. And one month she calls, we've been together for three months. She says, you know, this month, I don't know how I'm gonna pay my rent. I'm like, ooh, <laughs> okay, let's see where this goes. Yeah. She, I know, I know I'm going to pay my rent. I'm like, really? Yeah. Hmm. What are you thinking you're going to do? I don't know. What do you think I should do? I said, well, number one, I would go return your BMW that you have. That's $850 a month car payment, white convertible. I'd go return that and say, can't pay the payment anymore. Mm. What else would you do? Number two, I'd go back and I would get a Nissan Sentra $200 a month. That saves you 600 bucks a month. Mm. okay what else would you do i'd go back and i know you're doing insurance and real estate right now i'd go back and get your old job where you worked to give you a good shift where they can pay you forty thousand dollars that at least covers your uh, uh what do you call it expenses what else would you do boom 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 i said what i said and she says okay mm. i said what do you mean let's go return the car i said you sure <laughs> that day yeah. we drove to bmw she returned her car then we dropped up to Sentra. she got the Sentra. then she went back to her job and she got mm. a job and she so i said Never once did she say, can you lend me 1250 bucks? Not mm. one time. So to me, that was like, okay, because my biggest concern was, oh, I have money, so you're kind of trying to, Yeah. never yeah. did that. And I said, she has no clue. She just passed an incredible test for <laughs> us, right? Yeah. So I, it's, it's very risky, and there is no 100%. Everything about marriage today is odds. And sometimes you can have a fight that no matter what, you know, Kansas City Chiefs are supposed to win the Super Bowl, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Brady could still win. So yeah. you can still... Do all of it right, mm -hmm. and the odds are in your favor for this marriage to work. It could still fail. Yeah, no, that 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 is um, a conversation that we're always having, and I think to me, similar to you, I think the advantage of a man's ability to raise his son is so important in today, especially as the world gets more and more crazier. I just think, you know, that's one of the incentive, incentives for me is that like similar to how my father was able to be in my life. And I know you shared a story last time on the podcast, how having that one week with your dad, one day a week with your dad really shaped your life. And I always said that I grew up very rich and people are like, oh my gosh, you know, you're spoiled. How much cards? You're like, no, 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 we, my parents, we're never immigrants. We had no money. But my dad gave me so much love and time. Powerful, and that's man. and that was the richness that I grew up with. So yeah. for me, the, the beauty and value is in that for marriage. And so you made a point about criteria for selecting a wife. So if your son was 32 years old, you know, he established himself financially, you you see he's doing well and, he, yeah. and he's trying to settle down, what would, would be three criteria that you give him for a wife that comes off the top of your mind? Yeah, so first of all, you have to be physically attracted. So I'm, that's not even one of the three, but you do have to be physically attracted. Okay. So the whole idea about, well, it doesn't matter. Oh, no, it, it, it matters. <laughs> okay, it matters. And by the way, my wife and I, till today, we talk and we say, hey, you know, we have to stay in shape for each other. We have mm -hmm. to be attractive to each other. You know, we have to want to have sex with each other because mm -hmm. that is a very important part of marriage. So it's not like uh, 280 pounds, but you said through thick and thin yeah it's a little too much thick right now and i'd like some thin right you know but you know so so that is a part and sometimes men let themselves go and you see you know they got a big pouch but you know but you're my wife that's not how things work you know yeah, you yeah, have yeah. to so but let's set that part aside let's set that part aside um for me number one would be 
values and principles. And I'll explain to you from my parents' standpoint. My parents, my both my parents are Christians, right? But why did they get a divorce? Here's why. My mom was a communist. Mm. My dad was an imperialist. Mm. My mother believed rich people were bad people. Mm. My dad thought poor people were lazy. Mm. Look how big of a conflict that is. Yeah. So my dad's trying to become rich, but that's who my mom hates. Mm. How can your husband become exactly what you hate? The more my dad's aspiring to become rich, the more you despise rich people. Mm. Why would he become rich? You don't like rich people. Mm. I don't know if that made sense or not. Yeah, it makes so it's kind of like, dude, I'm, I'm trying to really give you the life, but she despises rich people. Mm. So values and pr principles. To me, politics is almost more important than religion. Mm. People say, why would you say that? That's so weird. Okay, so if a Christian marries a Catholic, yeah, they're both Christians, a little bit different. If a Christian marries a, you know, a Jew, okay, one's a Christian, one's a Jew. But it's very different, Patrick. I get it. Mm -hmm. But Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments, yeah, okay? Yeah. Same values and principles in that area, but economically, if you believe certain economy is going to be one way and she believes in a different way, if you believe politically one side and she believes, you're causing too many fights mm. and you're causing way too many things for kids to also have more fights with. So philosophically, you got to be on the same page. You know, the, the magic, the excitement's got to be there when you're around each other. It's not going to be like that forever because, you know, when you have kids, you can't have sex for three months. And it's going to be a lot of things that's going to hurt the magic at times. But there's got to be that twinkle where you're like, man, I can't wait to see. I can't wait to go have that dinner with her, right? And, uh, and then, you know, ask a lot of questions up front. Man, I asked, I said, so let me ask you this. Yeah, what are we going to do one day if this time? What would you do? One time I asked my wife, I said, let me ask you, if we get into a big fight, okay, terrible fight, I'm talking horrible fight we we're together for nine months when i asked this question i said uh, who would you call she said i would call this person that person this person this person this person i said okay so i got a paper and pen on tell me about this person are they married no she's divorced okay come tell me about this person tell me about that person i said i said yeah i'm not ready to get married mm. she says why not i said because everybody you call is going to defend you mm. and they need to defend me mm. but everyone's going to defend you she says, what do you mean? Who are you going to call if we get into a fight? I said, let me tell you who. I said, Dudley, my dad, and I went through a list of the names that I would call. I said, you know what every one of these guys would defend? Who? You. Mm. They would all say I messed up to come and apologize to you. I said, you see, the challenge is if I have way too many divorced friends, divorced friends like to recruit mm. people to the divorce community. Wow. Married people like to recruit people to the married community. Mm -hmm. Single people like to recruit people to what? single community we're all recruiters by the way mm -hmm, yeah. so so when you get married it's very important that most of the people you're around is also what like yeah, you yeah. or else you're going to be tempted so i made the list she made the list so you guys got to have the conversation we ask and say hey, if something happens who are you going to call and then i'm telling you 90 percent of the questions you're asking me is in 101 questions to ask before you get engaged baggage what do you bring to the table you know what what, what things do i have to worry about exes are you comfortable with a kid I guess the last one I would add with you would be the following. Create a list of your three non-negotiables, mm -hmm. which means, look, no matter what, we have to be both same faith, hypothetically. No matter what, you can't have any kids. No matter what, you can't be married before. Or no matter what, you can't have this. No matter, create your three no matter what, and don't create a 20 no matter what. Mm -hmm. Only three no matter what. So you gotta think about all the no matter what's and then uh, narrow it down to what? Three. Once you have your three, never compromise the three. Mm. Many people do mm. just because the sex is good yeah. or just because she's too pretty mm. or just because he's way handsome mm. or just because, you know, you cannot compromise your non-negotiables. When I'm running a company, a guy came up and he says, hey, Pat, let's do a deal on the side. I'm going to pay you a million dollars a year. Mm. And this is when I was smaller. He said, I'm going to pay you a million dollars a year. No one's going to know. Let's do a side contract. I said, you know what's crazy? He says, what's that? He said, I said, you have no idea how much I need that million yeah. right now. He says, I said, you have no idea how much I need that million right now. I'm yeah. telling you, I need that million right now because I'm bleeding. Yeah. I said, but do you know if one of my guys finds out who's loyal to me, that I did a side deal with them with you, even though I've never known you before, we just started like six months ago. Mm -hmm. I said, I lose trust with all, I said, I can't do that. It's part of my non-negotiable. I said, mm -hmm. I can't do it. I said, I appreciate the offer, but I cannot take you on that. He wow. was blown away. Yeah. Because everybody else said, <laughs> because one of my non-negotiable was win your existing loyal people over and never disrespect them. Mm. Always protect them. Once you do that and you go into a marriage, you know, you're, Hopefully, the odds will be on your side, but still, it's very important to know 
there is no perfect perfection when it comes down to that. Yeah. If you wait for that part, you'll never. If you actually do want to get married, mm-hmm. there is no perfection. Yeah. There is risk. Yeah. There is concern. Your heart could be broken. Yeah. Things could go wrong. Yeah. But you're just hoping the odds are on, are on your side.